In this video, we are going to talk about two by four floor trusses and some of the problems you could run into if you are putting a stairway or a stairwell, some type of a section in the floor that uh, would require different size trusses. The first thing I wanna point out is that if you order a specific size truss, it usually cannot be cut, can't be cut down. Uh, this is actually a response to a question someone sent in. They found a 24 foot truss that is trimmable up to six inches. You can actually trim up to six inches off of the truss. Um, so this would actually, you could build it for a 23 foot six um, foot wide building. So trusses, if you are going to design a building with a stairwell usually need to be designed by the manufacturer or an engineer. You cannot, like I said, just chop a few feet off of them. So let's go ahead and look at how to give you an idea of how it's built. Floor trusses with some blocks and of course the floor truss. Now something that I just want to point out to kind of make sense, you know, if you have a, the end of the floor truss and it's all designed like this, you would actually think that you could just cut it right here and then make the end of the floor truss the same size. But again, um, that might not be possible. So again, floor trusses like these need to be, if you have a drawing, you bring the drawing in to the manufacturer and they will provide you with the exact sized um, joist for your particular project. Here's a good example of what I'm talking about. We have the full length 24 foot trusses and then we have shorter trusses. If we have a three foot wide stairwell then these would need to be a little bit smaller, maybe three foot six if you have two by six walls and the trusses of course will need to be smaller. The wall that the trusses sit on would now be a bearing wall. And if that's the case, you are gonna need a foundation underneath it. Go ahead and take a look at this. This might actually need to be a doubler or a beam in some cases. So, or, or this floor truss might actually stop here and then a beam would be installed here. But again, this is something that the product manufacturer would provide you with. Just like roof trusses, floor trusses like these are designed specifically for that particular project. Um, you might even need a doubler underneath the truss to take some of the weight off of it. Another section view of it here. The footing that would be underneath the wall. And of course you can see it right there, give you a better idea of the footing that, remember low bearing walls require a footing. So if you're building a building like this, you're gonna need something like that. But again, this is something that the architect or the engineer will provide you with. Reason why I make a lot of my videos is because I understand people are not going to contact an engineer. Um, hey, I'm gonna do this myself. If that's the case, hey, guess what? Put the dang footing in, you're gonna need it. Here's another idea. You can uh, switch the direction of the stairway and you can see here where you can use more of the standard sized uh, joist if you, that you could purchase. And even with something like this, you might actually be able to cut something like this down or use some two by 12 or two by 14 because you can see that the span isn't going to be very wide or I should say very long so you could actually get rid of the trusses and again I'm telling you this for those people who are just going to do this on their own and they're not going to hire an engineer. A double floor, uh, a double truss for this. Single truss here with a beam sometimes you can use a truss again that would be depend upon the engineer. You would use top flange hangers most of the time. If you have a beam, you can actually use uh, side flange hangers. They don't need to be top flange, but if you're going to be attaching them to the two by four trusses, they're gonna to have to be top flange hangers. And the other side here, again, double uh, our hanger for the beam, and then uh, the hangers for the joist. Another view of it there. No wall here. If you had a wall here, then you could get away with a single floor truss probably. And um, the and again, you could probably have use a conventional beam here. You wouldn't need a 
floor truss uh, for something like that. And there it is. So stairways that run parallel to the joist uh, will require a little less effort, um, or I should say you'd be able to use more of the conventional uh, standard size joist that you could purchase from a lumber yard. And then this system right here could actually be just conventionally framed with two by 12 or two by 14, um, if that's the case. And, and you might even be able to use a six by 14 here. You know, hey, what, what size beam, find out what you need, get a, get a glue lamb or something like that. And then that way, the rest of the floor, you are gonna be using the trusses on this section right here will be conventionally framed with 2x14 and uh, maybe a glue lamb beam or a micro lamb or the LVL beam, something like that. Now let's take a look at what the individual actually asked me to provide them the information with in the email. They said they were not going to build a wall in here. And if that's the case, you could probably do something like this. Double floor truss all the way across, double floor truss all the way across, and a double floor truss here to support this. Now this, we did a lot of framing like this before, but again, this all depends upon the product manufacturer and the span of the floor joist. So if I was going to build something like this, like I said, I would contact the product manufacturer for more information so that they could provide me with specific sizes and, uh, and, and some, we used to get these doublers and they were, um, they were nailed together. They were already a tad, they would have the truss clip clips on them and uh, they were one solid piece. So if, if you're thinking, hey, I'll double up two of these, that might not work. You might actually need a specific, specifically designed doubler for something like this. I guess I just can't stress that enough is uh, like I said, I can't tell you how many times I come across to people that are asking me how to do something and you really do need an engineer for it. The tr We got a tripler underneath here, two, three, two by sixes. Um, you could, uh, might, re might need a four by six or you might need a six by six for something like this. And here's the footing I was kind of talking about. Might need a larger footing to support this because this is going to be a concentrated load now. It's not going to be something that's equally distributed throughout the, the regular uh, standard footing. Another view of it there. Again, top flange hangers are used for situations like this. And uh, another top flange hanger to support this. And as I mentioned earlier, or in the previous one, you might actually be able to do all of this with conventionally framed lumber, glue lamb beams, um, and then just use the floor trusses for the other section. Bottom view of it there. I always try and provide you with enough pictures, like, like pictures. And that's it for this video. So I hope it makes sense. Uh, I've already said it enough. I know that people complain about me repeating my uh, stuff throughout the entire project. Uh, you can stop the video right here. I have to say it again. Projects with two by four floor joists are usually designed specifically for your particular project. And uh, if you are going to design something like this on your own, um, good luck is all I have to say.